divulging meeting after that too and it expressed his displeasure at that and I think generally the way the Mets have played you recall they lost a close one in Houston on Sunday and they trail here four to one another foul ball down the left side by Howard Johnson one and two the count you've seen Johnson take a couple of good swings at breaking balls there Johnson used to be a poor breaking ball hitter I mean that's the only way I could describe it all you had to do was spin the ball and you had him off balance and he'd take ugly swings at it well he in the last couple of years has made a conscious effort to set on some breaking balls every now and then hit them hard and maybe make pitchers think twice about throwing it and a couple of times he'll go up look breaking ball and adjust upward to the fastball you have to have good wrists and be quick to be able to do that and misses outside two and two one of the more determined ball players that I've ever met in the major leagues after the Mets acquired him from the Detroit Tigers, he was almost run out of town on a rail by Sparky Anderson. Sparky simply did not like the way he played third or the way he handled himself at the plate and said so. And Howard Johnson said that has been the spark to come over to the National League and have some of the big years he's had. See if this one will stay in play over near the Atlanta dugout. Jim Presley coming over. Couldn't quite get to it. Jim upset with himself. I think if he'd been with the ball club a little longer, a little more familiar with the foul territory and the railing over there, he would have made that play. And chances are he would have made it over on the other side, too, at third base. You can take a look. See, he's looking for the rail here. And you can see him feeling for it with his bare hand. Didn't know that he had another step that he could take. So it stays two and two on Howard Johnson. He's a gamer, folks. Jim Presley. July and August, he'll make that play and make it with ease. And this guy's a gamer, too, Howard Johnson. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. 4-1, Atlanta leading it. We're in the top of the seventh. Williquist becomes the ninth consecutive Brave starting pitcher to get into the seventh inning. If he gets through it, he'll be the ninth to get through the seventh inning. Runs the count full, three and two on Johnson. And that's something right there you're seeing Lilliquist do a lot more and Tommy Glavin this year than you did last year. You can see this pitch is uh, kind of close to Howard Johnson's knees. That's not where he wanted it, but by that I mean he is pitching on both sides of the plate. He's thrown that changeup away, the turnover fastball away, but he's not afraid to come inside on right-handers, much more so this year than in 89. Now the payoff to Howard Johnson, fouled away again. Still a 3-2 count. David Cohn, Sid Fernandez handling that one. Braves with four solo home runs tonight, two by Lilliquist. One each by McDowell and Witt. The Mets got their run and a Kevin Elster solo homer. Again, the 3 2. Hit high and deep to left field. This might be another one. Taking a look is Tommy Gregg. It's 4-2. to two. The sixth solo home run we've had hit in this ballgame. And it's a two-run Atlanta lead. Number five of the year for Howard Johnson, RBI number 13. That's his second one from the right side. You saw him battle Derek Lilliquist to get to this pitch it looks like a fastball that is right down the middle Johnson who has a career batting average somewhere in the neighborhood of 260 hits about 295 off left-handed pitchers so much better swings from the right side and it's now a 4-2 game now Darrell Strawberry was struck out and grounded to third didn't get the fastball the count on one the first activity of the night begins in the Atlanta bullpen as Dwayne Henry begins to loosen Now the one strike offering. Foul back and Lilliquist quickly out in front 0 2. One thing about Derek Lilliquist you will always notice. He can go out there and give up six consecutive base hits and he'll still come back to the next hitter throwing strikes. He will not nibble. No change of expression. No added effort in his delivery. One and two with a count of strawberry. Mets fans in the crowd as always. He got him at the breaking ball in the outside corner. Strikeout number five for Lilliquist. Now 
out number one here in the top of the seventh. The second time he's got the strawberry tonight, and he's worked both sides of the plate with strawberry. This looked like either a cut fastball or a little slider. You can see Ernie Witt set up on the outside corner. Lilliquist hit the mitt. It froze strawberry. Strikeout number five for Lilliquist tonight. Strawberry for the second time. Now Kevin McReynolds, who has flied to left and flied to right. Just missed the ball one. Tomorrow night, Marty Clary against Zane Smith up in Montreal. That's a radio-only game. Our next telecast Thursday night from Olympic Stadium. Tom Glavin against Oil Can Boy. Too short and through the legs of Andres Thomas. And that'll be an error. And the fans are not being very kind to to Thomas. You can see this is the play we've seen him make a lot in the last couple of weeks. The one where he has to either go right to his left. The one straight at him is the one that has given him trouble. That one right under his glove. It scored E6. And the Mets have the tying run at the plate in the form of Mike Marshall. Marshall over two. He's grounded out to third. He has struck out. McReynolds, if you're not careful, will steal a base. Lilliquist does a good job holding runners. He has several moves toward first. Had only six bases stolen against him all of last year when he was out of the mound. Balk was called by third base up Bob Davidson. And that'll advance Kevin McReynolds to second. And that does have Lilliquist upset. I'm not sure why it was called. The third base umpire said he pumped. You can see only a slight little hesitation in his hand. It was nothing to deceive the runner. That's where umpires, I think, get a little carried away on these balk calls. The intent, I, I would like to see them question more the intent and call it on the intent of trying to deceive a runner. Lilliquist was not trying to deceive the runner. He just had a slight little hitch in his hand. He just started to move that hand just a little bit and just then moved it again. Bit. And that's when the ball was called. Well, well it's, it's because Reynolds at second. It's because nobody's wanted a glove measure tonight and something had to be done. Still only one out in the inning. Marshall takes the big four consecutive games trying to avoid making it five straight and it doesn't help when the pitcher Derek Lilliquist against Ron Darling in the third inning takes this shot out of there to give the Braves a two to nothing lead but he wasn't done three nothing in the fifth Lilliquist again all runs in this game have come by way of the solo home run Lilliquist has two of the homers the first Braves pitcher to have two home runs in a game since Tony Koninger did it back in 1966, Ota B. McDowell has a home run on the first pitch of the game. Ernie Witt has a home run for the Mets, Kevin Elster and Howard Johnson. The Phillies over the Reds, 4-2. Vaughn Hayes with a home run, three hits and five at-bats, and John Cruck had a home run as well. Other stories we'll be following tonight here on ESPN's Baseball Tonight. Nolan Ryan, 16 strikeouts last time out. The Rangers at the White Sox. More bashing in the Bronx, the A's and the Yankees. Teddy Higuera faces Brett Saberhagen as the Brewers face the Royals. And the Padres trying to end a four-game losing streak. But right now, we're going to get you out to Memorial Stadium after a break. It will be the Orioles and the California Angels. We'll be here all night on Baseball Tonight.